Hello and welcome to this episode of T Tech. Today we are using OpenBSD and PF to create a bridge. So this is going to be basically a layer two switch. So from here, we're going to log in. And here I have EM0, EM1, and EM2. In my case, EM0 is a LAN, EM1 is another LAN, and EM2 is our WAN. So the goal is we want EM0 and EM1, even though they're two separate physical ports, when we plug an Ethernet cable into them, we want to be able to access the same IP network, or in other words, the same broadcast domain. So what we're doing with bridges is the opposite of what we want to do with VLANs. With VLANs, what we want to do is have one wire be able to carry multiple networks. With bridges, we're trying to get multiple different wires to all be part of the same network. So we're basically extending the broadcast domain. Which you can do with VLANs as well, but it's a little bit different how you do that. So the first thing we want to do is hostname dot EM0. We just bring this uh, interface up. That's all we want to do there. We want to do the same thing with EM1. And then for EM2, we want to say DHCP. Now, the we've done that, but now we want to create a VEther interface. And that's a virtual Ethernet interface. And the reason is, is we want to be able to have a layer 3 network uh, in this switch, basically. But if we don't put it here we would have some unexpected problems. But once we finish the bridge creation, I'll explain what would have happened. So let's uh, make, put an IPv4 address on here, 192.168.10.1 slash 24. And again, we could do dual stack here or just native IPv6 instead. You can even add that after the fact, doesn't matter. And let's save that. But that's where our LAN interface goes. The, the address is what I want you to understand. After we've made that, we actually now want to logically combine these ports all in, in one. So we want to say dot bridge zero. And we want to add in here the add space EM0, add space EM1, and add space VEther zero. So those three interfaces, we want to add them to be part of this bridge. So when you think bridge, think Ethernet switch. Because really a bridge is an older term for an Ethernet switch. So basically we're making a very, very old switch. Because they were in software when they were first invented. If you wanted to know. But, um, <coughs> excuse me. Okay, um, now we're going to go into... Etsy, uh, sysctl.conf, and we want to enable IP routing with net and net IP forwarding equals uh, one. And let's quick just turn that on so we don't have to reboot the machine. All right. Now, let's also bring up those interfaces. So we're going to do sh. Etsy net start and that'll bring them up you can also reboot if you would like to now let's quick verify them so EM0 you want to see it be active same thing with EM1 good EM2 we have our IP address that's what we want to see and VEther whoops zero that's our LAN IP network and it's active and that's good that's what we want and our bridge is what's logically making them in the same broadcast domain or Ethernet segment 
So you want to see EM0, EM1, V ether 0. They're all in there. And you'll see we're using rapid spanning tree protocol. And you know, our priority and everything for our root bridge selection and all of that. And uh, this is important because if you're putting this in with other like Cisco switches or Brocade or HP or something, you want to understand about priority and how root bridge selection works because this is getting into more layer two concepts as well. And you know, it's important to have the, the right settings on there for that to take place. So um, we verified all of this. And before I clear the screen, the reason VEther0 is important to put your IP address on there is that VEther0 is logical, so it's never going to go down as long as either of those ports are still up. So we could lose EM1 as long as EM0 is up, you can still access that address, okay? Just like ports in a VLAN on a switch, you can still access the VLAN's IP if, though, if you have some of those ports still active. Just the, the end goal, what we're doing, is a little bit different. So let's clear that. And now let's, let's see if we still have the file. Let's uh, create our new pf.conf file. Now at this point, if you do want a normal switch, you don't want, you don't have to create vether0 at all. You can just bring em0 and em1 up, create your bridge0 file, add those two other interfaces in there, and now you would just have a basic ethernet switch. So you could only connect computers in the same network, of course, but you would still have a switch. So that's a really cool way to learn about switching as well. If you didn't have, you know, hardware switches, or maybe, you know, you, you couldn't get any right now, you know, they, it adds up. But uh, <clears throat> now we're going to go and create some macros. LAN equals uh, VEther0. And then we're going to do WAN equals EM2. And we're going to set skip on LO0 and set block policy drop. And then from there, we're going to do <coughs> block drop all, first of all. So we want to start with blocking everything. And then we want to say pass in on our LAN interface from our LAN colon network to any and keep state. And then we want to pass that traffic out on our WAN. And it's still coming from our LAN going anywhere. And then with NAT-2, we want to change the source IP address to be the WAN's IP address and then keep state on that. And then the last rule is pass out on our WAN interface from our WAN network to any and keep state. So these uh, rules will do the same thing as a normal um, firewall that has one LAN interface and one WAN interface. It's just because of the, the bridge, we have multiple ports to plug into. So from there, Let's um, verify this with pfctlnf and then our file name. Now we're going to flush everything and reload our rule set. Let's view that. Good. All our rules loaded. Now if we do netstat rn-rn-f for family and then um, that's init your IPv4. And if you look at your routing table, you'll see the networks we put in there. Um, the 192.168.10.0.24, that's on VEther0. That's connected route on that interface. And that interface um, is still part of that bridge. So, you know, as I've said, you can plug those ports in, you can still reach that network. And then your default route in this case goes out EM2, as you would expect. So, that's how we make a bridge. And uh, also... If you don't want to do the pfconf and put the IPs on there, also how you make an Ethernet switch with a bridge interface on OpenBSD. So I do hope uh, this was helpful. Um, I, I hope you found it informative and, and fun to watch. And uh, with all that, as always, it's Tyler with T-Tech. Thank you very much for viewing, and have a very nice day.